I'm Belinda Spry. I'm the Executive Officer of Wikimedia Australia. So thank you, Ewan, for joining our session tonight. It's fantastic to have you with us. We're really looking forward to your presentation. Um, I'll just give a quick bio before we head into the session. So um, I'd like to introduce you to Ewan McAndrew, Wikimedian in Residence at University of Edinburgh. The Wikimedian in Residence program has done absolutely amazing things like create resources on YouTube, integrate wiki projects into classes uh, such as create translations and add to Wikisource. Uh, we do have a link that I will put in the chat for those who want to read more. But otherwise, we'll hand over to you and now, um, and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Um, but basically, um, our main website for the residency is at tinyurl.com forward slash wiki dash UOE, UOE for University of Edinburgh. Um, and I'll explain a bit more about how it came about and what we've been up to. Okay, so why does... Edinburgh have a Wikimedian in residence. Um, well, we've got this vision that kind of suggests that we should. Um, so where our graduates and the knowledge we discover with our partners make the world a better place. And our teaching and research is to be relevant to society and to be diverse, inclusive and access all. And this, this is a picture of old college that one of our students Mihaila Bodlovich took and that is on Commons. <clears throat> and we also have what we believe is a shared mission with Wikimedia where the University of Edinburgh uh, has its mission as to be the creation, creation and creation of knowledge and obviously Wikimedia wants to have everyone be freely sharing the sum of all knowledge but how are universities walking the walk in that respect in that respect what are they doing that's not putting information into silos um so one of the ways is to sort of like look at teaching learning and research and working with wikimedia and we won an award a couple of years ago for the higher herald education awards for innovative use of technology in for wikipedia in the curriculum but it started way back in 2014, and it started with students demanding that resources be made open. Um, so way back in 2015, there was the national debate about how to make Scotland a more fairer, more inclusive, better society in the lead up to the Scottish independence referendum. But our student society, USA, also that year, challenged our senior managers at the university to make our education resources open licensed and openly available not just for the students at the university but for the wider world as well and that resulted senior managers responding with an a policy to, about open education resources and it was approved by our learning and teaching committee in january 2016 it's informative and permissive, and it encourages staff and students to use, create, and publish open education resources to enhance the quality of the student experience. And we have staff who man this OER service, who help colleagues make informed decisions about creating and using OER at the University of Edinburgh. And there's our website, open.ed. We, th we thought Open University had the best domain name, but we thought open.ed was the next best thing. And it was all because our team manager, Dr. Melissa Hyten, uh, was, was aware that there was a lot of work going on in the Wikimedia universe that she as a university IT manager didn't know about. And she thought, I'm going to decide to find out about this. So she hosted an editathon to trial it out, uh, which was on the Edinburgh Seven, who were the first uh, female undergraduate students to study at a British university. And uh, there was a, a riot outside the Surgeons Hall in Edinburgh when they tried to dare to study medicine. And so we made sure that they all had pages on Wikipedia in this editing event. And we borrowed a Wikimedia in residence from Museum and Galleries Scotland Dr. Sarah Thomas to allow us to hold this event. 
and it was cited as an example of good practice in preparation for our Athena Swan Silver Award. Um, but we also, because we're a, re a research institution, we wanted to research what was going on in these events. So we invited Professor Allison Littlejohn to come and evaluate what was going on in an editing event and whether there was genuine, authentic learning going on that wasn't just a gimmick or that there was conversations and learning happening in these events related to copyright, neutral point of view, what is a reliable source, academic referencing, and how information gets online, open access, all of the things that we want our students and staff to be cognizant of. And another, what we found as well was there was the motivating factor that learning becomes personal and triggers forms of agency. And there's a number of papers that Alison's written over the years about that editing event as a disruptive way of working in teaching and learning uh, that is impactful. Um, so that helped legitimate my position as I sort of started off as a one year part time role, two and a half days a week. But we important, we, we thought it was going to support our institutional commitments to open knowledge, information literacy, developing digital skills among our graduates and supporting equality, diversity and inclusion in improving representation online. So we see it as a multiple return on investment. And my role is positioned alongside other learning technologists, academic support librarians, and web developer teams. And uh, my role is essentially to raise awareness of Wikipedia and its sister projects, and to design and deliver digital skills events, to get colleagues uh, in the room to discuss and learn about how to benefit from and contribute to these free and open open knowledge res resources. So I, I go as a sort of traveling salesman, an Avon lady around the university initially, and here's working with colleagues at places like our Center for Regenerative Medicine, where they wanted to create more information about stem cells. But essentially what we, we found was that in getting people into the room, we created a, a lot of open knowledge nodes so that once we planted the seed of an idea, more colleagues were brought in. They came back with ideas about how to work with Wikipedia in their own um, contexts. And it kept developing all through the years and brought in more open knowledge nodes, more people committed to understanding about Wikipedia and how it could be used in teaching, learning, and research. Uh, there we go. So over the years, we've worked with about between 10 and 20 different course programs, but these are the main ones we work with re reasonably consistently. Reproductive biology has been run since 2015 every year. Group tasks, creating new pages about reproductive medicine, world Christianity, do a literature review, Assignment over 12 weeks, translation studies, 2,000 word translations of featured articles every semester, public health, digital sociology, design informatics, Korean studies, they created a great page on comfort women in the arts recently, and global health challenges do a group online task improving stub articles on natural and man-made disasters by 1,000 words. So what teaching fun? Um, and we've decided to sort of evidence what we do. And we've created a, a booklet in 2020 of case studies of how Wikipedia is being used in UK education so that other educators can see. And we're not just sort of like doing work in isolation anymore. We're showcasing how anyone can do this work. So we've got five case studies from the University of Edinburgh in there, but also case studies from Imperial College London. Sterling, Sheffield, Swansea, and more. Um, and that's at that short link on our, well, open.eds.ac.uk Wikimedia in Education on our Open Ed site. It's also on Commons. And we're writing new case studies to include. So there's 14 in there currently, but I'm adding about another six 
and hoping to get a new digital book booklet launched next year that's going to include mention of our Scotland Slavery and Black History Project and more recent assignments in uh, looking at improving Islamic art and science on Wikipedia. And Scotland Slavery and Black History was a, a an extracurricular project we ran with students of the History Society to examine Scotland's uh, legacy in terms of the Atlantic slave trade and writing new pages with a, about a positive examination of black history, uh, creating new pages about Ju Jesse Ewing Glasgow and more. And he was a Philadelphian born African American intellectual at the university from 1858 to 1860. Um, yep, so that's the global health challenges assignment. Um, they're really happy with that. We presented it on this project in an extended session um, because we've been working with them for the last three years and uh, they they really see the benefit of getting online students to really collaborate and think about their learning in a group task, working over about four or five weeks to improve these short stub articles about such topics as, as the Assam floods. Um, Professor Devi Sridhar is very well known at the university as being an expert in COVID and she advises the Scottish government, but um, she also sort of sees the benefit of getting public knowledge out there about public health topics. So she gets her master's students to contribute about 180 to 200 words from recent review literature on such topics as um, obesity and anything you come to think of that's really important in public health matters. And like I say, Enriching Wikipedia content is a powerful way to improve health literacy and the course leaders on reproductive biology have changed over the years, but they all see the value in getting their science students, their medical students, their intercalating students, all in the same room, collaborating with a postgraduate tutor and putting learning about good quality digital research in the field of medicine and how to communicate their subject to a lay audience. And they see that one of the main benefits of working with Wikipedia in this early semester uh, workshop that we do in every September. But we also work with Wikidata because we are charged by the Scottish government to create a new data literate workforce to support Scotland's growing digital economy. And we know that data is the new bacon. Um, so Wikidata is a big part of supporting growing that data literate workforce and getting the 10,000 data literate students that we want over the next 10 years. And in the design informatics course, they hold a data fair every October where they get problem holders um, who have data sets like from the Scottish Government or National Records of Scotland or the National Library of Scotland or researchers from different parts of the university to pitch in three minutes a, a data problem and a data challenge to master students on the design informatics course so that they work in groups of three to take this data challenge and this real world data set and do something creative and visualize the data in an interesting and stimulating way over the course of five, six weeks. And one of the um, projects we sort of have consistently worked with is the university's survey of Scottish witchcraft database, which was stored in a Microsoft Access database way back in 2003 and was left relatively static and well respected, but not well used. And like I say, teaching data science is really important to use real world data sets. So we charged our students to think creatively about what could we do if we took the very textual information stored in rows and rows and columns and columns of access uh, database and took that and put it into Wikidata and visualized it as um, linked open data, particularly if we could plot them on a map, if we could take 800 place names and geolocate them on a map. Um, but we again, we wanted to surface what we did and give students opportunities, particularly during lockdown when there was a bit of a hiring freeze at the university. 
So during lockdown, we hired Hannah Rothman to create a website for us to pull all the how-to resources of engaging with Wikidata and Wikipedia all into one place. So we created this website, tinyurl.com forward slash wiki dash UOE, pulling all the best resources that we could find out there about teaching Wikipedia and teaching Wikidata, but also creating short and po hopefully polished like one to two minute or one to three minute videos about how to add a citation, how to add an image and open licensing them to embed them on a website, to embed them in YouTube, but allow other educators to make use of them if they want to run online or in-person workshops. And we feel that student internships are a great way uh, for students to learn and get employed and get experience. So we've held a number of internships over the years. Emma was our first there in the sort of yellow cardigan. Um, and she was a geography student that we asked to hunt down all the place names in the Survey of Scottish Witchcraft database and geolocate them on a map. And then we had Laura as our Women in Red intern. And then Hannah created our website. She's in the bottom right. And resort those 20 resources working from home at her parents' house in lockdown. She did an enormous power of work and won an Open Education Global Award for her work. And then we expanded that the following year with Erin writing about resources about how to engage with Wikisource and Wikimedia Commons and clear to make more, the Wikidata resources much more evident and how to support equality, diversity and inclusion through the Wikimedia projects. And then we've also had student experience grant projects where Shan, Eleanor and Kirsty worked over 12 weeks, one day a week to improve LGBT history, black history and gender history and had a big end of project event where they got other people to, to crowd, crowdsource the work that they'd prepped. Um, We've, got, we've had two new interns last summer, Maggie and Joseph, to improve our Map of Witches website because lots of people are engaging it and we wanted to make sure it was fit for purpose and add more data from the Survey of Scottish Witchcraft. And I now need a new intern to make sure that that data is robust and does what it's expected. When you hit the results, you, you get what you want. So, because uh, we've added so much data now, and I now need to sort of make sure it's quality assured. And there's Maggie um, presenting at an event at the Edinburgh Book Festival, because um, uh, there was a new book called Hex by Jenny Fagan about an accused witch, Gillis Duncan. And we were, we've been invited to do a presentation at next year's Edinburgh Book Fest to, uh, again, to talk about this map of witches work that we've done. Um, and finally, the Edinburgh Award is uh, something we're really excited about, and it's we're into our second year. And what this does is this this accredits students for doing fifty to eighty hours extracurricular work. Um, that will help them develop their personal, professional, and academic graduate competencies that we want the, the, their university experience to help imbue, because we know that a degree is often not enough, and that we know that students are do, often doing a lot outside of the university, uh, a, lot, a lot outside of their studies to develop themselves. So we want to accredit them for doing that work. So we have uh, a digital skills award that's called Digital Volunteering with Wikipedia. It runs from October to end of March and the students pick a topic on Wikipedia. They want to research that they can deliver a demonstrable and significant improvement and impact on. And they pick three graduate skills that they want to develop over that time whether it's critical thinking or problem solving or confidence and assertiveness, they pick three skills that they're going to evidence that they are going to focus on as part of the award, but they're also going to deliver a significant demonstrable improvement to Wikipedia. And these are some of the topics they were interested to write about. 
climate change, LGBTQ plus history, female artists, South Korea, COVID-19, STEM, mental health, contemporary artists, African diaspora, and more. Um, we've got videos of the students and staff talking about um, the, their experience working with Wik Wikipedia, and it is largely, I would say, all positive. Um, but if you want to find out more, you can email me. Um, and these are just some documents about um, some of the work that's been done on the, the Edinburgh Award, like uh, Helen Chadwick, who was seen as a young British artist teacher only, but we made sure that her artworks and her artistry were, were added to Wikipedia as part of the award. But anyway, those, I can show you the video of student and staff responses, but I'm conscious that I might have talked too long, but I will stop at that point. <laughs> I think you're spot on, Ewan. I think you've actually got one or two minutes to go, but I think people's internet might fall over if we tried to play a video at this point. <laughs> yeah. But, um, if you have links, um, that would be fantastic. We would, I'm sure people would love to watch the video and see um, some of what you're talking about in action. But thank you. That was absolutely amazing. I'm really interested in the digital volunteering component. That sounds um, amazing, quite incredible. But I'll open it up to people um, who might have questions. And I'm aware we're literally just about at the end of our meeting. But if people want to stay on, and hopefully you and you don't mind staying just for a few moments more to answer some questions. Um, yeah, I'll open it up to everyone who would like to ask you in a question. Sure, Ewan. Um, what resistance did you find at the start of the uh, Wikipedia in Residence program from, particularly from faculty? Uh, I mean, obviously there's the usual ones, oh, Wikipedia is terrible, you can't trust it. But were there more other nuanced uh, objections or suspicions of the program? Um, I, I, if you're talking about 13,000 staff, there's, there's enough staff that get that and that you, I, we, there was a lecturer in theology, Alex Chow, who was a, a long time, he was a developer in his previous life. And he edited Wikipedia and he was very excited to try it out. Um, and so he approached me. Translation studies, I, I approached them and said, you know, we've got this content translation tool. Can can we do some work together? And they were they were looking at different ways of uh, improving on their course content anyway and swapping out components that weren't really working for them in terms of the learning outcomes but that yeah you're right there are those and that are still sort of skeptical and have preconceived ideas so but what we did was we tried to run events when they could attend when they might be uh happy to attend during like a semester break or evening or lunchtime sessions and, or running like presentations during forums that were already happening at the university and just piggybacking on them. And we just had a, the conversation and stimulated ideas and challenged some of those preconceptions. And we planted the seeds of, and they came back to us. Like I say, the, the, this idea of open knowledge nodes was sort of created over time. Uh, supportive and yeah challenging those those assumptions was important and getting people in the room to have that conversation was important so that that worked but the one thing that came out to me is that one lecturer in the school of business uh, felt that why would I want to contribute to Wikipedia when it is essentially misogynist uh and felt that it was they they'd sort of seen the sort of news articles that Wikipedia had had a largely sort of male sort of tech background sort of in terms of its editorship and didn't have enough biographies of women and they felt it was a toxic culture uh, and that sort of that stimulated quite a college wide debate. 
because they they hit reply all to the whole college and um they also said it, i don't have time to contribute because i'm a single parent uh and I think that started a debate about whether male single parents or female single parents would have more more time at the university. So there were there were some interesting times, but the upshot was that I was told no more college wide emails. I, I was sort of like held accountable for the fact that someone else had hit reply all, um, and started this sort of gender who 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 has more to do a female academic or a male academic basically that's what happened mm. so, but yeah communication at the university has been challenging because it's such a big university and getting but yeah we've developed ways of sort of not having that problem and challenging people that have you know you have to be we we feel you have to be in the in wikipedia to help change any cultural problems in that way the abstinence is not the answer hmm. a follow up question we in new zealand we have a couple of lecturers that are setting wikipedia assignments to students in class Big problems with those, they tend to be ghastly. The lecturers do not actually edit Wikipedia or understand it themselves. So the students are drafting things in Microsoft Word and uploading them to Wikipedia the day before the assignment's due, after which they never edit again. Uh, how would you tackle those sorts of problems with the course? I mean, what would you do to change that culture? It, it's interesting because there was a lecturer that when I first started, who, and I was like, oh, you've done a Wikipedia assignment. And she said, yeah, but it was a disaster. Uh, and I would never do it again. Um, but so I, my, my, my thinking is that you have to set it up to succeed. And also you have to uh, do a bit of wiki elf work at the end as well. Yeah. So there's a sort of book ending that I do so like I, I make sure that I'm trying to uh, let the lecturer know what they they have particular learning outcomes they want to achieve and if they can explain it to me I can say what would work well in a sort of Wikimedia context and sort of but I don't know if you can unpick something that's been badly set up for if you come in late um so I, I recommend just going in and just having making sure sitting down and sort of developing the assignment between the two of you do the lecturers themselves have to have wikipedia editing experience to be able to assess how well the students have met the task uh no i don't think so i okay. think uh, they can I think they can assess it from a pure sort of academic point of view as well, but they they sometimes lean on me to sort of see uh, what kind of mechanisms do you have in the Wikimedia universe to help me assess that. So we use the dashboard the, to sort of like show them the authorship highlighting tool, right. word count and number of citations added helps them quantify mm -hmm the edits and and they they do sort of like to assess if certain group members have uh contributed more than others but i think we can we sort of pair it sort of the the work of the dashboard with like a rubric or a sort of peer review um task so where the group members can assess each other as well and assess how the group performed and so we, we we like a reflective component that that is done outside of wikipedia have you had any assistance from wiki education in the states because i know they normally only work with us and canada i think any of their resources been useful uh i mean there's i haven't had much consistent interaction with wiki education because they tend to sort of like just focus on their the american context uh, yeah. but 
they 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 do have some resources pdfs that i've i've made use of over the years and sort of like their booklet on case studies was what i used as a sort of blueprint for creating the our own booklet of uk case studies um so yeah um you know cherry picking what you can find so i've tried to put everything that i, I use on the, our website Thank you. Cheers. Anyone else have any questions for Ewan? Um, yeah, yeah, I was wondering about um, uh, if you've had, I think you have had success in using Wikisource um, in a teaching environment. Um, has that gone well? Like it seems a, a less controversial way to get people involved. So, no, I I wouldn't say Wikis. Well, we've 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 worked with students to improve resources on Wikisource to try and like lessen the barriers for engagement. It's still, it's it's we've had more luck with Wikisource in terms of. Uh, our collections and the National Library of Scotland's collections, like Gavin Wilshaw at the National Library of Scotland uh, did a, a project um, during lockdown where he could, he was the digitization manager of National Library of Scotland and he couldn't get the staff into the building to do the digitizing because everyone was at home social distancing. So instead, he just said, look, we've got these 3,000 Scottish chapter books. Can we just teach you and work with the Wikisource community get, and get the 60 digitization staff all working from home on Wikisource to digitize these books? And fortunately, we've poached him back from the National, National Library of Scotland because he used to be at uh, the University of Edinburgh Library anyway. So he's he's our go-to man for wiki source work now um, at the, the library and collections. And we're hoping to do more projects together. It's just making, he doesn't often get a lot of time to do it. So there's not a consistent approach with wiki source. I think I would be interested if there were courses we could work with that would be interested in that. Uh, yeah, and that's fine. I think we're over time anyway. So uh, thanks, Kelly. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to sort of engage with and like let people sort of pick the project they would like to work with and sort of like just explore through conversation how it might work in an academic context. But it's 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 more library and collections work with Wikisource. But yeah, I, I'm I, I'm still trying to improve the resources to make it nice and easy to sort of engage with. We've got some new video resources about that you've also developed as well, Sam. Like we've made use of. We might have time for just one more quick question if anyone has a quick if it's possible to have a quick question <laughs> this is also interesting no we're all we're all done great well thank you so much Ewan I've got huge amounts of information from that it's really really interesting I think some of us might be going to um, send you a few emails and keep in touch <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah, sure. yeah, that would be great. We're certainly looking here in Australia at our um, training, but I uh, know Amanda and I and have just recently had some conversations with Fiona Romeo as well around, um, you know, what can we do with universities and what can we do with, um, you know, getting students more active in this space and getting, getting lecturers on side and getting faculty on side. So it's been really interesting hearing um, what you're doing and some of the, you know, leaps ahead that you're making in this area. It's been, um, you know, hard work over many years, but it certainly seems to be achieving some fantastic outcomes for the university and for Wikimedia as well. So 
yeah Thank i think you. there's a it's, there's a fertile space but it, you know it, it, the pace of change in academic context is quite slow and mm. and can be quite fast in certain respects but if you're talking about curriculum transformation and mm. it can it in drip feeding ideas it, it sort of does take a little while for for things to germinate it, but I would say there is a sort of fertile space in terms of student collaboration and the kind of graduate competencies they want we want to inspire mm. and they do a lot of the lecturers do like the fact that Wikimedia allows postgraduate students to work with undergraduate students and that mm. sort of cross-level opportunity is, being, is, is exciting and there aren't mm. always that many mechanisms to allow that to happen it's very sort of um linear flat sort of like they all work at the same age level and the same year level mm. a lot of the time but yeah the edinburgh award allows us to do a little bit more of that yeah that's uh, great and i think as well thinking about all these students graduating and going out into institutions and carrying on you know this hopefully this passion for open access information, open link data, um, you know, you're going to start to see more requests coming through from institutions as well, which, you know, which these graduates will be taking out with them into practice in the workplace, which is, you know, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll yeah. Get there. Yeah. So it does, it does, I would say that the students that we have engaged with are still positive and that would they come back years afterwards and say like they still enjoyed it and it was one of the best things they did. Um, during their time at the university. And we do have um, a PhD researcher, Eleanor Capaldi, who worked with us on a student experience grant earlier this year on LGBT history. And she's now finishing her PhD over at the University of Glasgow and looking at, she's running a workshop tomorrow, no, Friday at the University of Glasgow about how images and artworks uh, can be transformed uh, and sort of used from Wikipedia and to help promote LGBT history. So she's she's continuing to sort of like look at how Wikimedia can sort of be better represented online. Amazing, yeah. really exciting stuff happening. It's great to hear about. So really want to thank you for um hopefully not getting up too early <laughs> but we no, really it's... appreciate you your time it's really fantastic for us and our community over here to hear about it um uh, I oh yep no i was just gonna say it's it's a, like um, i'm half australian myself so like uh, <laughs> it's always nice to sort of uh inter to support the australian community like and give give something a bit back my mom's a Briz from brizzy Oh wow, fantastic! Yeah, and not forgetting our New Zealand cousins over there, Mike, Michael. Of course, <laughs> give I, us a I, wave, I Mike. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. That's great. That's really good. Good to know you've got a connection here. So, yeah, fantastic. Okay, so um, thank you, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Sorry, we've had a few tech issues and a few adjustments. Um, so our next meeting will be held in January. We haven't quite finalised all the presentations for that yet. So if you have something, please feel free to get in touch. Um, James and I will probably be casting around looking for interesting speakers or interesting projects to present on. Thank you everyone for your time tonight. I will leave um, it open for a little while if people want to hang around for just some casual chat. But for those of you that need to head off, thank you and we'll see you again soon.